Anybody hear that? I'm fairly alarmed here. Welcome back to the Knights of Christendom, where we are trying to drive out that spirit of modernity, to drive out the heresies of the modern world, the modern culture, and restore that which was lost and forgotten. And we're trying to do that by bringing to light the things that people may be ignorant of, may not know about, or may have, as I just said, forgotten. And one of the things we're going to do tonight is go over what is known as the Ulta Vendita, which is, as I said, if you've watched my introduction to this, a kind of real-life screw tape letters, because it is an instruction from hell to the servants of evil and how to get rid of the Catholic Church. Now, normally I have my co-host Frank, but he's not going to be with me tonight because he's had some problems with his his teeth, and uh, he's going to be on any, he's on antibiotics and painkillers, so he's not 100% right now. So he's unable to join me tonight. He's going to probably join me tomorrow. And this will be a kind of part one, part two kind of thing. Now, I'm going to go over a basic introduction to the Alta Vendita. Some of this might get repeated a little bit tomorrow uh, because I don't know everything Frank wants to go over. But I'm just going to go over everything that I have right now. And so when it comes to the Alta Vendita, as I said, it's, it's like a letter from hell to the demonic servants that Satan has on earth. And... Its primary purpose is to kind of change tactics. Because, see, so far the Masons, up until this point, were more aggressive and outward in their attacks on the church. Though they themselves always were a secret society, they were very, uh, how can I say, they tried to motivate different cultures and nations to attack the church physically, you know, through force of arms. So, in this Alta Vendita, they recognized a problem with that approach because it wasn't exactly working. So, allow me to get into this and where it came from and a little bit of the history of it. So, as I said, the permanent instruction of the Alta Vendita, it's its name, is a secret document, really. It was written in the early 19th century that mapped out a, a kind of blueprint for the destruction of the Catholic Church through subversion. The Alta Vendita was the highest lodge of the Carbonari, I hope I'm saying that right, which was an Italian secret society which was part of the Freemasons, and which, along with Freemasonry, was condemned by the Catholic Church. In fact, all secret societies are condemned. Now, this was discovered in the Italian, in in Italy, and it was ordered published in 1859, excuse me, 1859, by Pope Pius IX, and uh, printed in English in 1885. Now, as as I've just mentioned, Pope Pius IX ordered it printed, but so did Pope Leo XIII, which goes to show you just how serious the church took this document. Two popes went forth to have this put out there and publicized so that the world could see what these secret societies are up to, specifically the Masons. And it was such a threat, such a danger, really, the as we're, you're going to see with some of the quotes we go over, that this needed to be out there in order to rip the mask off as, I believe it was Pope Pius IX. I have the quote later on, but as one of the popes said, we had to rip the mask off of this, off of Freemasonry, and bring it into light. Because, you know, evil always hides in the darkness. Well, anyway, Pope Pius IX guaranteed guaranteed the authenticity of these documents himself. So I wanted to put that out there straight up at the very beginning, because there are some of our comments stating that It seemed like they said some people were disbelieving of its existence or its authority or authenticity. Well, this document is real, it's authentic, and is not to be taken lightly. I believe that's beyond uh, denial at this point. When the church had gone so far as to put it out there, but also the Pope himself guaranteed the authenticity of the document. So, what does it say? Well, from the very start, from the very beginning of this thing, it starts with an attack against the church. And I have a quote here, quote, Ever since we have established ourselves as a body of action, 
and that order has commenced to reign in the bosom of the most distant lodge, as in that one nearest the center of action, there is one thought which has profoundly occupied the men who aspire to universal generation. That is the thought of an enfranchisement of Italy, from which most must one day come the enfranchisement of the entire world, the fraternal republic, and the harmony of humanity. Now, enfranchisement, what is he talking about? He's talking about freedom. Freedom from what or who? Well, the freedom he's talking about is license, not necessarily true freedom, which is something that comes up when we look at the documents uh, or the inspirations for the Founding Fathers at times, that the word freedom has different meanings to different people. And the freedom they're talking about is license, really. We want them, we they want Italy in this case, but also the whole world, as it says, free, quote unquote. But the freedom they want is freedom from the church. And, you know, there was a, a person I heard a long time ago who this crew said, when people say, gee, we want you to be free, we want to be free. What are you talking about? Because, see, I can be freed from a playground and straight into traffic, right? I've said this before in one of the casts. So we've got to be careful when we hear that word freedom, we instantly want to think good things, right? But it's not always. Now, they wanted freedom from the Roman Catholic Church. And notice, this is also the language of the Enlightenment era. The Enlightenment like to use that word liberty, freedom, because it sounds good. Who's against freedom? Nobody's really against freedom. We're certainly not. It's just that what we kind of focus on is the definition of true freedom versus license. Now, again, the Enlightenment and French Revolution is at the core of what's going on here in this document because it uses a lot of French Revolution and Enlightenment uh, terminology. Quote, our final end is that of Voltaire and of the French Revolution, the destruction forever of Catholicism and even of the Christian idea, which, if left standing on the ruins of Rome, would be the resuscitation of Christianity later on. You see, their inspiration comes from Enlightenment thinking, French Revolution thinking. It's all connected together. And it's all geared towards, towards the destruction of the church. Now, as it plainly says here, the end goal of masonry is the death of the church. Now, you can't get more satanic than that. That is possibly the literal definition of satanic. It's anti-Christ at its very heart. So, we need to keep that in mind. And you know, the, the really scary part is the next line, or I should say a few lines down, that the Alta Vendita confirms the existence of other Masons in other countries who are also trying to kill Holy Mother Church. Yet this Italian group will use treachery and subtlety. That's going to be the difference. In fact, this is going to be something that the other Masons will later on adopt. But that's the thing that, he's, that this document, this writer of this document, is setting apart from the other Masons. Now, as he says here in the Alta Vendita, quote, Let them even mock our Madonnas and our apparent devotion. With this passport, we can conspire at our ease and arrive little by little at the end we have in view. It may last many years, a century perhaps, but in our ranks the soldier dies and the fight continues. See, it doesn't matter that this might take centuries upon centuries. This, it doesn't matter that the people who started this may indeed die, and then, but others continue the fight. They keep fighting. And you notice he used the word passport. What's the passport? The passport is their, quote-unquote, apparent devotion. Not true devotion. Apparent devotion. And through the apparent devotion, the, the, the outward signs of devotion, the outward displays of piety, the Madonnas, you know, the Hail Marys, okay? The, they're going to say their little prayers and go along, and our brothers may mock us as if we're converted, but we're secretly we're not. No, we're not converted. 
we're getting in there. We're using this false de- uh, piety and devotion as a passport, as a means of getting in there. And then from the inside, corrupting the whole. Now, anyone has been paying attention to what's going on in the church. How can you deny the effectiveness of the Freemasons in accord with the Alta Vendita document? You have to be blind, deaf, and dumb to not see it. Now, I'm not, I'm not necessarily picking out a specific person. I'm, I'm not going to name names and that kind of thing. The key here, though, is to see the principles of masonry and the Alta Vendita, the principles of the Alta Vendita lived out in the church. That's why you can always hear it in the way certain people talk about watering down the faith. How we got to accept pagan idols and pagan worship. But it's not really worship. It's this enculturation. It's being welcoming and opening to all the various communities of the world, blah, blah, blah. It's a watering down of the faith. It's an attack on the faith from the inside. Now, this is a turning point for the Masons because he, as I already said, from this point on, they're going to seek to infiltrate, not so much as to persuade now. They're not looking to win people over through argument. Like, that's why it reminds me of screw tape letters. Because in the screw tape letters, screw tape tells Wormwood, do not try to win over your patient through argumentation. Because the enemy, which is God in the book, can argue as well. And you're putting the fight on the enemy, in this case God, what he was saying. You're putting the fight on the enemy's doorstep. Because that's where the enemy wins. So they... They are very much like screw tape going, no, no, we're not going to persuade. We're not going to persuade others to sympathize with us or win over others through argumentation, but rather they will infiltrate the church to influence the church over a century. So clerics who naturally agree with their principles would arise, leading to the happy day that they would have a Mason Pope because they will not have had to sit down and argue with a pope or a bishop and go no and convince them because that's for them that would be weak. You convince them, well, they might give up those beliefs just because of the power they have or some monetary gain or the pressures of office. We want a true believer in the heart, right? And the way they did that was to teach, to teach the seminarians and influence and elbow rubbing. And, of course, corrupting morals. That is their, their modus operandi. Corrupting morals. So that way they have, then they'll have blackmail on people, which allows them to have more power, which allows them to influence those coming in and coming up in the ranks. And here's another quote. That which we ought to demand, that which we should seek and expect, as the Jews expect the Messiah, is a pope according to our wants. It is because by that we should have no more need of the vinegar of Hannibal, no more need the powder of cannon, no more need even of our arms. We have the little finger of the successor of St. Peter engaged in the plot, and that little finger is of more value for our crusade than all the innocents, the urbans, and the St. Bernards of Christianity. How do you like that? Wow. I mean, how is that not just, I had to read that several times when I was picking out quotes here. They're saying it straight out. Once we have the successor, his little finger is more powerful than all the nations that we can rouse up to fight the Catholics. He'll do it for us. Now, I'm not going to name names and I'm not going to even insinuate anything. I'm going to leave that up to you. I mean, as to whether any specific persons are in fact Masons, I will leave for others to speculate because I don't want to go into conspiracies. The takeaway, though, is that the Masonic principles have infiltrated the church. And as I said, they've been very effective, very effective. And one way I would like to point out, though, is naturalism. Naturalism is a principle of the Masons. It's nature worship, basically. And we can see, really, the resurgence of paganism, even within the Vatican, as evidence. Uh, There were certain idols that had to be thrown out. 
into the Tiber. Now they fished him out and everything, but well, look at that. That is paganism entering the church. That is Masonic naturalism entering into the church. And when we talk about these different Amazonian rites that are, that embrace all this paganism, guess what? Now we've gone into religious indifferentism. Oh, look, another pagan principle, another Mason principle. And the Masons love separation of church and state. Oh, they love religious indifference. They want all the religions running around so that there's nothing but confusion. Because if every religion's acceptable, then none of them are. Because they're all counter contradicting each other. Now, the tactics described here are very, just plain devilish. And the modus operandi of corrupt morals the Masons so love to employ is, of course, active here as well. You see, if a prelate, according to the Alta Vendita, comes to Rome, their mission is to envelop him in all the snares which can be placed beneath his feet. What brings, what comes to mind when I read that was the homosexual parties that were uncovered in Rome some time ago. They were having these, uh, apart in the uh, bishop's apartments, they, they discovered these uh, homosexual, I don't know what you want to call it, disgusting parties that they had going. And it makes me think, there it is. There's Mason influence right there. Masonic influence. Because they want to corrupt them. Because when they're corrupted, then they're going to go along with basically anything that the Masons want to do. Now, it also makes me think of the sexual abuses that we're still discovering and the many, many cover-ups that have gone on. Well, I mean, are we so blind that we can't connect the dots? You see, the Masons want them engaged in all that in order to bind them. They'll be bound in sin, bound by maybe shame or embarrassment, bound and easily controlled. You see, now they can do all their influencing that they want to do because if bishop or cardinal so-and-so is engaged in this, they can just simply remind him, listen, you can go about your business, do what you want. We'll even protect you and hide you, but you're going to let us do what we want to do too. And what they want to do is, like I said before, educate. They want to teach. They want to influence. Raise up new soldiers to keep the fight going. Now, there's some hope in that because we can say, well, all this discovering what's going on and bringing it to light is God bringing justice and vengeance upon them because they can't keep it hidden. Now it's being brought out no matter what they try to do. Now, there's another part here I want to bring up real quick before I close this out because I don't want to run too long. I don't want to waste everything because, like I said, me and Frank are going to try and get something done tomorrow. So I don't want this to be too repetitive. I just want to put something out there so you know where we're going with this. But the last thing I want to put up is that the Masons and in the Ulta Vendita, they even rewrite history. And which we, we pointed this out before in one of our other casts. But the Ulta Vendita says this, with the idea of the pontifical supremacy, Mix always the old memories of the wars of the priesthood and the empire. Now, how often are we taught the evils of the kings and the church of the past? How evil the kings back then were, boy. They were, they just were just tyrants, all of them. And the church, oh, so corrupt, so very corrupt in every aspect. That doesn't mean, yes, there were some corruptions. There were an era of corruption going on at, at a certain time. But notice that they're going to blow it out of proportion, right? They're going to spin it, and they're only they're going to constantly drill it in. These, well, see, they were always disgusting. They were always corrupt. They were always this or that. And they're rewriting history, or at the very least, they're spinning history so that they look like the, the saviors, especially when they start to bring up the idea of freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Because... If you got it in your head that the church was evil and the kings were evil, then we, well, we gotta, we gotta bring freedom from that. We gotta liberate you from that corruption. So, I hope this has been a, at least a pre, like a kind of preamble, to the main show. Uh, I was hoping to do it with Frank tonight, but like I said, he's in a lot of pain, so we're gonna have to put it off to tomorrow night. But I wanted to put something out there at least, so you can kind of see where we're going with this, and you kind of get a, an introduction to the Alta Vendita. And this is really, like I said before, it's a real document. It's authentic. The Pope has authenticated himself. And this is indeed an evil document. Pure evil. And here's the thing, too. 
it's being lived out even now. It's not like this was a document a long time ago, but we're okay now. We, we, we got done. With, no, it's, it's being lived out today. Look at the church. Look at the leaders. Look what's going on. Like I said, I'm not going to name names and say this person is that, but I'll leave that up to you. But the point is you can see the Mason Masonic influence on these prelates. You can see that they're living out the Alta of Indita to the T. That is, this is their, their instruction on how to do it. And they have lived up to it. And anyone who tells you, oh, the Masons, blah, Masons, Shriners Hospital, man, they do such good things, blah, blah, blah. It is a front. That doesn't mean every single Mason you meet is evil himself. The Masons love to use ignorance as a weapon. No, we're going to let them think they're just doing charitable stuff like that. But they're going to they're gonna give us an image, a front, to make us look good. We're going to get money to fund our, our true plan. And we're going to keep our true plans as secretive as possible. Also, when you bring up the uh, Alta Vendita with people, of course they're going to call you conspiracy theorists and nuts. Because, remember, they don't want this out there. And they've taught people that it's it's crazy. They've taught people it's stupid. They've taught people that it's it's just some myth, that it's not real. Oh, don't worry about that. Blow that off. No, don't, because this is serious stuff. This is getting souls damned, and we need to bring this into the light and wipe this out and destroy it and rip it out from its roots. This is our enemy right here, and we need to cast it out in Jesus' name. Thank you once again for joining us. This is Sir Hammer. Reminding you to always be on mission. Oscar Mike.